Welcome back to the Crafted Entrepreneur Show. We are in tight quarters today because we are filming at home and you don't even want to know what I had to do to get him on this show today. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I am bringing you my amazing husband. How long have we been married? Uh, I forget. This year will be 16. Okay. 16 years dating for 17. And I'm excited to bring you on the show. Yes. It's always a fan favorite. We were children. We were <laughs> we were children having children. We were. That's pretty accurate. So I love to have you on the show because I always feel inspired talking to you. And I don't know, like you're my voice of reason. I like to explain myself. I'm the hot air balloon. My head's up in the clouds most of the time, and you're my anchor, keeping me to earth. And so I think a lot of people have that dynamic in their marriage, you know, and it's love month right now and while we're recording this. And I think we've gone through so many hard things in our marriage and (laughs) to not go into specifics, but we've, we've gone through it and we are at a point in our marriage now where we love each other. We like working together. We like doing life together. I just love being with you and I want to give people some tips on their relationships specifically. Oh boy. Well, because I, I always felt like an imposter giving relationship advice because I know that I'm not perfect. And so I want everything that we're sharing right now is not coming from a we're perfect and we've got it all figured out place. We're just sharing with you that we are very imperfect people. We've made a lot of mistakes and we have a lot of grace on each other, you know, for those mistakes that we've made. Sometimes. (laughs) And we're just sharing from the place of like, if anything that we do could help a marriage or a relationship, uh, we want to share it. If it could help anybody, we're willing to share our stuff pretty much. Well, I think we have a unique aspect of our relationship that is relatable because a lot of our listeners, I'm assuming a lot of your listeners are married with kids and running and trying to build businesses and running businesses. And a lot of, a lot of the people out there that we all listen to and enjoy and all the things and learning from, they don't have the same I guess they're, they're just not as relatable, right? Like there's a lot of people out there that may be married, but they don't have kids or they're single. And, you know, and so I think a lot of the stuff that we can bring value to you guys as listeners is the fact that, yeah, we, we, we are going through exactly what everybody in uh, our demographic, I guess, is going through, right? Married, married couples with kids building businesses. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's not talked about. Mm. Uh, and and because a lot of the people out there that are creating content don't have those types of relatable lives so okay as you said that I was like wow should we share with them a current situation that we're in right now you know what I'm talking about uh I don't but I would love to hear it (laughs) what is the thing that we're talking about like every day right now oh uh a big life change Mm -hmm. I mean why not share it I mean we can I don't care It feels like a big thing to share. Yeah. Like, because I don't want anybody's opinions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm not worried about that. Okay. We don't really listen to people's opinions in, That's true. anyway. That's true. <laughs> I know. Different. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Well, let's share it. Yeah. We're we're currently going through a big situation. And I actually think the reason why I want to share it is because it is so relatable. And I want you to hear our mindsets behind it. And the things that we're, we're working through, because I think the reason why our marriage is healthy at this moment in time, because it's always a moment in time. Okay. Every day is a new day is because of communication. When we are not communicating on a regular basis, things just blow up. Yeah. But now that we, we, we talk through things, you know, I get in the car and I'm calling you not because I feel like codependent on you. It's just, I want to talk to you. It's like, sometimes that's the only time we get to chat alone is when we're both driving. So anyway, let's share what's happening in our life. Okay, you guys, we are thinking about moving. 
out of state, so out of California. And I know some of you that are listening into this, I personally know you that have left California. And we're we're not even talking about leaving California for the reasons that you probably left California. We maybe some of them. Maybe some of them. <laughs> maybe that's that's his mindset. But here's the thing. We are at this place in our lives where it has our lifestyle has become a little bit chaotic. I don't want to say a little bit. It's become a lot chaotic because of our kids' schedules. So we have a 13-year-old, 11-year-old, and a 9-year-old. And both of the boys play travel hockey. And it's, I mean, how much did you travel in 2023? Uh, by, by the end of February, it'll be 11 times. No, since I'm talking about for all of 2023. Gosh. It's it's uncountable. I well, think. It was seven from September to the beginning of January. So plus, yeah, probably close to a dozen at least way more than that yeah yeah it's not even <clears throat> it's been by by the end of february it'll have been 12 travel or 11 travels since september of 2023 so you guys see how that? different our mindsets are i'm like okay this is these are too many details you're losing <laughs> me here you're losing me we should a lot that out. twice a month twice Editing. a month so, yeah that makes a lot more sense when you say it like that yeah okay so like anyway on an airplane travel not like driving an hour or two right without us yeah so me and the younger kids are home and uh or going to Channing's games and stuff like that and it's just it's a lot and then he's traveling traveling to New York for going to his office there and it's just like you know we never see each other I feel like yeah I'm gone 15 days a month typically yeah it's a lot so that being said what brought you to start like even entertaining leaving us California uh, I mean, obviously the travel is a lot. I'm gone a lot, which means that, I mean, most of my travel is with Cooper, our, our 13 year old, which means I get to spend amazing quality time with him and, and go on amazing trips and all this kind of stuff. He gets, I mean, he's been to probably more States than most adults, which is really cool for him to be able to experience, but it means that I get, I miss that time with you. I miss that time with with our other two kids and I just don't want to look back and go man we could have made a change and I could have been around more I mean kind of the reason why we got into entrepreneurship in the beginning right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I was you know before we you know stepped in both as a couple into building a life of our own I was working you know, 60 plus hours a week and gone out of, out of the home for a long time. And, and it's why we built what we built. And now it's like, okay, we're back to me having to be gone, which is a choice. And, and, you know, it's a lot, some people may be listening to this go, oh my gosh, that's crazy that you're doing that for, you know, your kids sports, but it's what they love. It's what they're passionate about. And we want to be able to support their dreams as, as much as we can. And, um, and I also think that there's so much, there's so much life value that comes with, um, you know, kids playing sports at a high level and, um, being with the team and ton of life values that they learn from doing those things. And so I want to continue to foster that and continue to give them the, the right opportunities to be able to work at something, be diligent, develop discipline, like all these things that are going to help them pass their, you know, wherever sports takes them, I don't care. It doesn't really matter. I mean, obviously we want them to pursue their dreams at, at the highest level. So whatever that means, we're going to, we're going to support them and give them the resources, the opportunities to be able to do that. But if sports don't take them past high school or whatever it is, they're developing all these skills that's going to be able to then prepare them for when they start their own business or get into entrepreneurship or have a family or whatever that looks like leadership, all those things, I think really just pours into developing them as, as young um, men and women that will be valuable for the rest of our lives. So that's why we chose to, you know, invest in, 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 their sports and their other opportunities the way that we have and mm -hmm. we want to continue to do that mm -hmm. yeah and it's crazy because I feel like I didn't grow up loving sports at all 
I was not like an athletic person. And now my kids, like it's, they're so into it and I love watching them play. And I know it's, it's a choice to have our kids play at these high levels, you know, and all these clubs and stuff like that. But what you said, it's so important. Like you learn so much playing with a lot of pressure and it's, I think it's going to set them up for life just in like, Hey, yesterday you were a winner today. You're a loser and get back up, go to yeah. practice, go to practice, go to practice, go to the next tournament. I love that the it's developing that grit for them. Right. So anyways, my take on this whole thing, when Chase brought it up to me, I thought he was joking. I, I legit was like, I will never leave California. I love California. And I know that people talk so much crap about the politics and all the stuff. I don't care the taxes. I don't care. I will pay it all day long. That's my mindset because I love it so much here. I love the people here. I love the energy here. I love everything about California. I never want to leave. I never want to travel. I don't even want to go on vacation to Hawaii. I don't want to go to Turks and Caicos because I live in the best place in the world. <laughs> like how, when do I want to leave? I'm a homebody. I want to be here in Newport beach. So to even be entertaining this is absolutely crazy that I'm actually entertaining it, but it goes back to what he said. It's, it's the quality time with the people you love. And I'm not getting that here. It just, it's constant chaos because of the travel schedule. And so for me, I go, Oh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Like we could go to Minnesota or Connecticut and we'll be back here in four years. And I could do anything for four years is kind of what I'm looking at it right now. So we're, we're talking a lot about it. We're praying about it. I'm praying about it. What are, why are you going like that? Nothing. I'm listening. I'm praying about it. Uh, and him, he's more logical about it. He's like, we will save how much you added it up. Will we save a million dollars a year? Probably. That's crazy. Like, so when you think about it, but I'm like, I'll pay a million dollars to live here. Like if, if, if you, if I had to just straight up write a check, a million dollars to live here, have the lifestyle that I have and have all my friends that I have easy million bucks done. Yeah. I mean, that, and that, those are the, those are the, this is our marriage. Those are the conversations that we have <laughs> because I, I look at it differently, right? I look at it like, okay, that's a million dollars a year that we could be putting into investments and setting us up for legacy wealth that we already are doing that though. We are, but we could do it at a bigger scale. Like, right. Like serious legacy wealth that are going to set that's yes. generational, you know? Yes. But I think there's a part of we there's a book I just read. It's called die with zero. I don't remember who wrote it, but the whole concept is so many people, they work so hard all the good years of their life. And then they're 60, they have all this money, but they don't have the health to enjoy it. They don't have their people to enjoy it. And I'm like, I, there has to be a balance of investing and enjoying your life at the same time. And I feel like that's what we've been doing. And I want to keep doing it. I feel like, Hey, it's chaotic, but I could do it for the next couple of years. I'm playing. You know I'm playing. So it's interesting because there's this verse in the Bible that talks about submitting to your husband. I want to talk about that because so many people, like when they hear submit to your husband. So by the way, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because ultimately it's going to be Chase's decision. And that's what I told him. Here's all the reasons why I don't want to move. Me and Charlie don't want to move. Period. End of story. We want to stay here. Right. And we're valid. The, the opinions are valid and he's taking it into consideration. But at the end of the day, I make a lot of emotional decisions and I feel like anytime I don't listen to Chase, I'm telling you, like I could write a book on all the times my husband told me not to do something and I did it anyway. And I, it backfired on me and there's a, a, maybe a handful of situations where I didn't listen to and things work out like network marketing. Yeah. That worked out. Okay. It did. It worked out really well for us. It changed our lives. So, um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a lot, but ultimately I just decided that I am going to submit to him in this. And I want to talk about what does it mean to submit? I mean, I think so. So there, there's two pendulum swings here, right? You get the people that believe, you know, that 
submitting to your husband is a form of, of de degrading the the woman in a way or giving too much power to the man, blah, 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 whatever that is. And then the other, and then the pendulum swings the other way, right? Where it becomes, so, you know, the Bible, the Bible really focuses on the complementarian view, right? The, I mean, there, there's, there's a view of complementarianism, which would be the, the woman submits to, to the husband, the, 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 the man is the, is supposed to be the leader of the household, right? Um, God created Eve to be Adam's helper, um, he didn't create Eve to be Adam's oldest child, right? And I think that that's where the complementarian view tends to swing in the wrong direction mm. to where men can view the wife as their oldest child rather than their, their, their helper, their, their helper, their complement, their, their partner, right? That we're, we're partners in life. We are one. Um, and there's a really healthy way to do that to where the man is still doing his role and leading his family well, um, you know, in a godly way and in a prayerful way and all those things and not doing it in a degrading way or in a less valuing way um, that devalues their their wife. Um, and I think that people fail in that. Um, and so I think it's really just, you know, as as the man in in husband and father our job is to lead our job is to provide our job is to lead with love and um and that's you know that that's the healthy way of of the wife submitting to a husband who is who is leading them in in a godly manner in a in a wise manner that um you know their our job and it's clearly stated um, that Paul writes that our job is to love you as Christ loves the church, right? And so if we're doing that well, and we're striving to do that well, then I think submitting to that is very easy for the, for the woman. The woman. Yeah. I just looked up the definition of submit, and it's to accept or yield to a superior force or the authority or will of another person. I like that it adds the yield in there because it's not like, I'm just always going to listen to what you tell me to do. But when you're, <clears throat> what I feel like happens, and I've really, I struggled with this for most of our marriage because I never wanted to yield or listen to him ever. And there's, <laughs> there's a reason why there's that verse in the Bible it's because it's protection for us. You know, it's really a safety thing, I think, where he has a lot on his shoulders and he's going to try to make the best decision for everybody. And I don't want to make that decision. I don't want to make that decision. I'd rather him make the decision. And I know that God's going to work everything out for our good either way, whether we stay here, whether we, whether we move. And if it's, it's so on his heart, you know, to like, I mean, he can't stop thinking about it. Then I feel like, and I know he submitted to the Lord right? He is following God. He's praying. He's reading his Bible. It's easier for me to go, well, I'm going to, if he has this inkling, it's like Noah building the ark, you know, it's freaking crazy. Everybody else thinks we're, we're absolutely insane. His best friends are like doomsdayers about it, you know? And, but I'm like, okay, but there's something in his spirit that is feeling this call. And as his other half, I'm going to be like, okay, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't want to do it, but he's done a lot of things for me where he didn't want to do it. You know, he didn't want to come alongside. And I think that we all have those times in our lives. So anyway, well, it's human nature, right? It's in, in, and it's human nature for us to even, even submitting to the Lord, right? It's, it's our human sinful nature to want to push against that and trust and rely on our own um, you know, versus submitting to God's will and all those things. So it's not, it's just our human sinful nature to want to push against that. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Now I feel sad. I'm like, Oh, why? cause I really don't want to move. <laughs> when we're talking about, it, I'm like, Oh God. But I think that that's important. I have come so far. Can I just get a pat on the back that I can even have this conversation? Because if this would have happened a year ago, you would have been shut down. It wouldn't have even been a conversation. Yeah. You wouldn't, it wouldn't have. I have grown and I have matured because I feel like, you know, we only have one life and 
we all resist change so much, but sometimes change is a good thing because it's getting us out of our comfort zone and it's challenging us to step into something new. And even though I don't want it to happen and I pray, I'm literally praying against it. I don't want it to happen whatsoever. Uh, you know, whatever happens is, is meant to be at this point, because I trust that Chase isn't going to put us in a bad situation, you know, like either way, it's a win. If we move, it's a win. If we stay here, it's a win. There will be, there will be, okay. The grief of being here because we'll, we, it's costing us a million dollars to live here a year and we could be investing that. So that's like, okay, you know, I'd ra- I want to be a good steward. And then the other half is, okay, yeah, we'll save a lot of money but I'm gonna miss all my friends. And I, and I, I'm always a proponent of paying for quality of life, right? That's why we moved to Newport beach. It was like, you know, we were, when we lived in Bakersfield, we had a great life and all those things, but we really wanted to upgrade our quality of life. Um, and obviously staying here in California, staying in Newport beach, our quality of life here in, in the actual location is amazing. But if, if we aren't even around to even enjoy it. And at the end of the day, my quality of life is what happens inside of my home with my family. I could be anywhere in, anywhere in the world and still find quality of life if I'm with, Aww, you know, you. if we're with the ones that we love and we only have, you know, our youngest is nine. We only have, you know, call it nine more years of them, of our kids, you know, last one being in the home. And we're so young that I look at it like, okay, I want to spend those nine years you know, enjoying my family, being around, um, you know, doing what we set out to do to be entrepreneurs. We built businesses, especially businesses where we can essentially work from home. I mean, I have an an actual headquarters and location, but I don't have to be there, right? That's why I go once a month. I'm not living in New York City to, you know, to be in the office every day. We built, I built that specifically. So I didn't have to do that, right? Put people around me and hire the right people that can manage the day-to-day stuff. We built this life and working for ourselves so that we could spend the quality time that we wanted to spend at home and doing things with our, with our kids. And if I'm gone or Cooper's gone or whatever, that doesn't happen. Right. And so, and, and also the thing that we, you know, left out is if, you know, Cooper, our our 13 year old decides that he wants to pursue hockey at a higher level in California, there's limitations. So he's going to have to end up essentially moving away out of the house by the time he's probably 16 years old. I don't want that. I want to be able to, I want him to sit at our dinner table until he's 18 years old and moving out of the house and going to college and doing whatever. Right. Um, That's what bring, that's what I feel like is our highest quality of life. Um, I can, I can live anywhere as long as we have those things, you know? Yeah. So do you guys see how good he is at talking you into the dream? Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because then when he says it like that, I'm like, oh yeah, I mean, I'll move. We'll see what happens. But either way, what I do love, let's let's get back to the main thing. Okay. We we kind of went on a tangent there. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. But the main thing is that because we are entrepreneurs, we can live anywhere. Mm-hmm. And we also like if we move to Minnesota or Connecticut, because those are the two places we're thinking about. We also have the freedom to go, Hey, I want to go see my friends in California. We're getting on a flight this weekend, you know, and we'll be able to do that. We don't have to worry about money. We don't have to worry about taking off time or anything like that. It's just like, okay, like we will have that choice. And so I think that's also a beautiful thing. How did we get to that point? Well, in order to, I think, be successful as an entrepreneur at this stage in this economy, you need to have multiple streams of income. 100%, you cannot rely on just one income. Do you agree? Yeah. And I think you have to build build a life of flexibility. Mm-hmm. Right? What does that mean? That means not being tied down. Like the, the amazing thing that we have the ability to do is not be tied down to a certain location, not be tied down to, you know, it's why we don't, really build brick and mortar type businesses, right. And having the flexibility to where, or if we do have a brick and mortar business, we have the right people in place that can manage and run those things so that we can have the flexibility to, that's why we, that's why we, that's why we're entrepreneurs, right. We want to have, you know, the reason that people build their own businesses is so essentially at least one day they can have the time freedom and, and the financial freedom to be able to do whatever they want, whenever they want. Right. And that's, that's the main goal, right. To have no restraints on, you know, the financial aspect of your life and no restraints on time. 
um, those are the time you can never get back. Right. And so to be able to, you know, that's, that is the, the goal. Uh, and that at least, uh, that's at least our goal of being entrepreneurs and, and being our own boss. Right. And we, the reason that we work so hard in building these businesses and being successful and investing in multiple different streams of income and all those things is so that, uh, you know, even right, even though right now for me, as I'm building this business, it doesn't allow me a lot of time freedom because I'm in the process of building. Right. And then you go through those seasons where it's like, okay, well, I'm in, I'm in build mode. I'm in scale mode in a year or two, I'm going to be in, you know, this is going to provide X for my life. Right. Whether it's, it's essentially the goal is to, for it to provide financial and, and time freedom. Uh, and so, um, that's the, the, the beneficial spot that we're in right now. The reason that we can make decisions like this is because we've spent the last many years working really, really hard to have this type of a life to where we can have options. Mm -hmm. And I want to point out something, cause you said, you know, time is the one thing you can't make more of and mm -hmm. you can't get it back. And so, you know, as you're listening to this thinking for yourself, where are you spending your time? Are you allocating your time to the things that really matter to you? Because we need to make sure that we have our priorities in alignment. We do. We need to make sure that we have our priorities in alignment. Chase went to, I think what actually spurred this up was you went to an event here in Newport. And remember, you went to an event here in Newport and a guy was talking about priorities and having your, you know, like making sure you're taking care of yourself. And tell me if I'm wrong here, but you started thinking about, well, gosh, like my health, your health has suffered since you've been on a plane so much. You're mm -hmm. traveling, you're eating out all the time. There's, there's a lot that like, you're not able to do because you're traveling so much. And I think that's what started to get his wheels spinning around. Well, how do I decrease the travel? Cause I don't like how much I'm traveling because, you know, people go, I love traveling. It's, when you have to travel, like when you're forced to travel, you don't like it as much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you keep I love travel. Yeah, I me do, too. Me yeah. too. When but it's a, when it's a necessity, it's, it's it's not as fun. Right. And so I think you started to think about those things. Like, how do you start putting your health first? And you're like, well, how do I travel less? Well, <laughs> the only way I see myself traveling less is moving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and too, and, you know, even for our, even for my work or my business, you know, like I said, at my headquarters is in New York city. I go there once a month for a whole week. The reason that I go there for a whole week is because it takes me a day to get there, right. Traveling across the entire country. And so, you know, for me to make it worth it, to get, go all the way out there and be there, I need to be there for four or five days. Right. And being closer to that place, I could, you know, two hour plane ride with a one hour time difference makes a lot more sense to just pop in and out when I need to. Right. Um, and so that will decrease my time away from, away from the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of things to think about in our family right now, but I think the thing I want you guys all to take away is like audit your life because from the outside looking in, everybody will look at our life and say, wow, you guys are killing it. You're doing amazing. And we are like, God is good. God has been gracious to us in our lives. And we still were going, okay, you know, what's the most important thing? God, us making sure we're good and our kids. Okay. That seems a little bit out of whack right now because our schedules are so crazy. So what do we need to do to change that? And I think more of us need to be taking some bold steps and it might not be as drastic as moving across the country. Like we're talking about. Okay. It might be that you have to start saying no more. I talk to so many of my clients and they're high achievers, all multimillionaires. Number one thing they struggle with, saying no. They want to people please. They want to sign up for all the things, be on the volunteer committees and do the extra because they feel like, oh, but I can. But when you say yes to something you don't really need to do, that's not in your zone of genius, that God didn't even tell you to do, you're saying no to something else. And so you need to be very careful to say yes. I say no 99% of the time. I just got asked, somebody wanted me to speak and I already said yes. And they had to pay. Okay, fine. And it's an, it's a morning spot. And then they said, can you come back and do an 8 PM thing? I told my, I told my staff, no, if they want me to come back, that's a second appearance. It's going to be more money because for, it's a, it's an energy take from me. Right. And 
I wanted to get some sleep that night so I can come back and be restful for my kids the next day. If I'm up until 11 o'clock that night and have a 5 a.m. flight the next morning, I'm going to be tired. Like I'm not going to be any good the next day. I'll do it if it's going to make me some money. You know what I'm saying? And that's my, that's my standard, you know? And, and I, I almost thought about it for a second. I was like, oh gosh, what are they going to say? But then I'm like, no, what are my kids going to say? My kids do not, at this point in my life, my kids do not get my leftovers. My husband does not get the leftovers, period. Do you have anything else to say? No, I like it. <laughs> do you find yourself saying yes? Because I feel like I've seen you because I'll listen into his calls sometimes. Just like, I mean, I don't hear what anybody else is saying. I'll hear what he says. And sometimes I hear you go, oh yeah, we can do that. We can add that. We can, we can do that. And I think it comes from that place of scarcity when we're saying oh, yes all the time. Like, do you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Not to put you on the spot. No, yeah. I mean, I, that, that's something I'm, I'm naturally a people pleaser and I want to. He's my golden retriever. If yeah. you've ever taken the personality yeah. test and, and I'm a lion. I mean, I think not just with business, I do that with, with everything. Um, and so I've had to, especially in growing my business and, and getting, I mean, we're in massive scale mode right now, which is requiring a lot of time from me. Um, I've had to say no to a lot of extra stuff that I would have always said yes to. Right. Um, you know, going and hang out with buddies or, um, going, you know, I, it, it took everything I had just to do my annual guys trip this year with my best friends who we've been doing it for the last seven years. And I'm like, I, you know, I took everything I had to, to even do that. And so, um, just because I've, I've had to Your be time very is protective very valuable. of my time. Yeah. And I think that like, but you, up until probably like six months ago, you were saying yes, a lot for more, sure. like, like even for Cooper's hockey team, he went and designed all the merch for the parents. And like, he goes above and beyond. Like, why? I'm like, Chase, there are, there are moms that don't have jobs that like, they can do that. And you're, you know, has a ton of employees and you're getting up at six o'clock in the morning or, or running your first call of the day is at 6 a.m. Pacific yeah. Standard Time. Like, it's crazy. So anyways, I'm really proud of you for starting to like say no and say, I, I can't do those things. Uh, it's been cool to see you grow in that. And I think I want to talk about how it comes from a place of people pleasing comes from a place of scarcity. It's going, oh, but if I say no to this person, it's going to hurt their feelings, which means they might leave me. Or, you know, if it's a customer, if I say no to this, like, no, I'm not available for that, then they're going to leave me. They're going to go find the competitor. And I think that's for you a lot of times what's happening. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you've got to really like step into like the right customers for me. I'm always going to follow through on what I said I was going to do but I don't have to do things that are not in my scope of practice, you know, Yep. in fear, they're going to go to the competitor. If they go to the competitor, then they go to the competitor. No. Yeah. I mean, it's gotten, it's gotten me into some pickles <laughs> with my business because in the beginning it was like, I was, I was trying to make everybody do, do anything and everything just to bring on a client and, you know, get it going. And now fortunately I'm in the position where I can say no to people, um, you know, or I'm not in the position now, but like I've learned, over the last couple of years that, and that I should say no, and I can say no. Um, and there's plenty of other people in the pipeline for me. Right. Absolutely. Because it's usually the people, I think that this is what I've found. The people that are really demanding the clients are usually the ones that are the ones that are nickeling and diming and wanting more for less. They are the ones who don't even end up bringing as much business as they promised. Yep. Right. Yep. And then the ones who are super grateful, like so amazing to work with, kind and friendly to all the staff, barely ask for anything. They just, they want the job done that was originally promised, right? Yep. They're the ones that they, I mean, they're not asking for like, you know. Yep. My biggest client I hardly ever hear from. <laughs> but you're doing a good job. Yeah. And you're doing what it's you said good. you were going to do. Yeah. And he's busy just working his business and he makes a ton of money. Yep. And the other ones that are nickeling and diming, they don't make a lot of money because they're, they're spending so much time nickeling and diming. Yeah. And worrying about things that don't even matter mm -hmm. for their business. <clears throat> yep. I think you should hire me as your consultant. <laughs> okay. Joking. I, I already free already. I feel like I should be the chief. I want to be, you know, on that show Billions, Wendy. Yeah. I want to be Wendy for you. Will you hire me? No, I can't afford you. <laughs> you can afford me ten grand a month, and I want a rep shirt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, oh. We, share, we share bank accounts. <laughs> I love you. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we had a fun conversation. 
we were all over the place today. Let's give everybody a few tips on what to leave with when it comes to their relationships. So number one, I, you give one, I'm going to set you up. You're going to, and you're going to wrap us up. I'm going to leave it with you this know, one. I'm not good on the spot like this. I know this one. I'm going to give you time. I'm going to go on my, <laughs> my little Still tangent really quick. Spot. So my thing is in this season of our relationship, I've gotten really good at understanding. This is basic, but I've gotten really good at understanding that Chase is going to a whole new level. I think he's turning into the person he doesn't even know yet. Like he's getting to know that version of him and God's revealing it to him even more. But like, I don't even think he sees himself yet as who he will be in five years. And I really feel like I have made it my job, made it my mission to intercede for him and pray on his behalf and speak life over him. Like all the time. Instead of doing what I used to do, where it's kind of like, I'm frustrated with him. I'm da, 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 da. Now I, I don't allow myself to do that. I just pray, pray, pray in the spirit. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and just be praying over him. Did you know I did that last night? No. Yeah. You didn't even know. But I have been, Sleep. I know you're a hard sleeper, but I just, if I get those nudges, I'm just like, no, it's my job to pray for him right now and intercede for him and, and speak life over him and speak the vision over him when he forgets, when times get tough. And that's our job in relationship, not just with our spouse, but friendships, business partnerships. Like we need to be interceding for other people and taking it to God, you know, on their behalf in Mark chapter two, somebody was healed because of their friend's faith. And so I want to just like impart that upon you today. Who do you need to be praying for? Who do you need to be speaking life over? And uh, really, you know, seeing them how God sees them, not around like your own fleshly stuff, you know, because I am such a hypercritical person in my flesh you know, that I could be extremely hypercritical of him. And I have asked God to like change that about me. Like I do not want to be that wife. And do you see a difference in me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Yeah. <laughs> and it's also just made me like happier, like, and have more peace too, because I'm just like, give it to God, pray, 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 pray. And, and I know that he is doing a new thing in chase and I'm holding that vision for him. When, when he gets so caught in his day to day, you know, I think that's really important that we pray for our spouses more. Yeah. What's your tip? Obviously in the, uh, in these conversations that we've been having lately that we have shared with you guys, it's brought up, you know, I think the main thing for me is I just, um, I try and be slow to react, right? Like I can, you can, and I'm sure a lot of you have these different dynamics with your marriage, but Kayla is the more, you know, fiery side of things. <laughs> And I'm definitely the more, you know, calm and collected person. Um, and, and, but I, you know, the one thing that I, that I have been trying to practice is like slow to react. Right. Um, and I know that her uh, reacting to a conversation or, or an idea, especially when we're talking about moving is just coming out of a place of, uh, I think it's her little Kayla coming out that is fearful of change and fearful of instability and, and, you know, comes from, you know, different childhood traumas that she's had in, in the past. And my job is just to, you know, stay true and steady and give her space and, and, um, you know, just slow to react in those moments. Oh, I love you. See? You're gonna make me cry on this podcast right now. <laughs> Gosh, I'm just like a cry baby lately. But anyway, I love you. That's that was really good. I love that. I think the the tip for anybody listening in, if you're maybe the person that's not slow to react like me, but I think when your spouse is struggling with something, see them as God sees them, mm -hmm. right? And like knowing that most of the time when they're not coming from like when they're having a freak out moment, it is because they're scared. And it usually is their inner child that's scared. It's not their big champion self that is in full alignment with God in that moment. It's, it's another version of them. And so having patience and grace for them is what will get you to the other side. Because when you're patient with them, like the father, our heavenly father is patient with us. That's what makes us feel safe in the relationship to trust somebody, you know, to make a move and to follow them. So thank you for coming on my show. When are you coming back? Next week? <laughs> I guess whenever you tell me to. 
It's because I've been asking for three months to come on the show. Okay. But it's fine. All right. I love you guys. I like being behind the scenes. It's like, and that's why I built a business so I don't have to like be talking. I know, but, time. but you bring a lot of wisdom. Okay. Yeah. If you guys love this show, comment below, tell us on social media, what you love, what do you guys want us to talk more about? Because I think that <clears throat> it's important for more marriages more people with healthy marriages to come on the scene and teach about what it actually was looking like behind the scenes. So that way it helps all of you guys be healthier in your relationships. That's really our goal. Like we know, we don't know it all. Um, and we're just, you know, taking it a day at a time. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening in.